Hello, Cardinal fans, and welcome to the UIW Coaches Show. I'm your host, Carla Bello. On this week's highlights, the UIW Cardinals football team continue its Southland Conference winning streak by dominating Southeastern Louisiana 52-34 at home on Saturday. Joan Copeland had a sensational performance throwing for a UIW single game record of 411 yards and three touchdowns. UIW was also able to register two touchdowns from its defense with a 55-yard interception return from Darius Montgomery and a fumble recovery in the end zone from Lucas Sturman. The Cardinals improved to 3-0 in conference play and 3-2 overall. In women's volleyball, UIW was unable to claim a victory last week as they fell to Texas A&M Corpus Christi in four sets and Houston Baptist in five. Senior outside heater Maddie Slaughter earned a career high of seven blocks and sophomore libero Madeline Miller set a personal record with 39 digs against HBU. The UIW women's soccer team captured a huge road win at Texas A&M Corpus Christi on Sunday by a score of 1-0. Taylor Husfield scored a goal in the 20th nine minute to lift the Cardinals to their first road victory of the season. Over to men's soccer, the Cardinals capture a 3-1 victory over the University of Missouri, Kansas City on Sunday afternoon. UIW was down 1-0 earlier, but stormed back and scored three goals within the last eight minutes of the first half. Anthony Savi netted two goals, while JP Nava added another one. Cross Country was busy this weekend as they hosted the 13th annual UIW Invitational at Live Oak City Park. The men captured first in the competition, while the women finished second. Don't go anywhere, Cardinal fans. After the break, we will have head football coach Eric Morris with us. Stay tuned. Hello, Cardinal fans. Please come join Coach Jeff Van Gundy and the UIW men's basketball coaching staff and supporters on a fun night hearing from Coach Van Gundy talk about his tremendous coaching career and his time as the lead. NBA analyst for ABC and ESPN. We think it's gonna be a fun night for you to hear from a, a lively and hilarious legend, October 13th at the SEC. Hey Cardinal fans, joining us, we have one of the youngest college head football coaches in the nation, Coach Eric Morris. Thank you so much, Coach, for being here with us today. How, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing wonderful, so. Uh, makes Sunday and Monday a lot easier when you come off a victory. But, uh, but yeah, just going back to the drawing board, uh, game planning right now for, for a tough Lamar team. Over the weekend, Southeastern Luciana jumped out to a 14-3 lead in the first quarter. How did the guys come back from an early deficit and were able to control the game? Yeah, I think we just stayed calm throughout the course of it. Um, you know, we talk about all the time there's going to be some kind of adversity that hits, and, and it did early. You know, we came out slow on both sides of the ball and uh, they jumped out and then we kind of regained our composure on the sideline and, and we started executing you know the little things and doing the little things right and and we were right back in it so uh, defense made a huge play at getting the uh, Darius Montgomery made a great play on a tip ball and, and returned it for a touchdown so that sparked us a little bit got us a little bit of energy on the sideline and then uh, not there long after we had a fake punt that mm -hmm. kind of sparked us again so Football is a game of up and downs. You know, you got to withstand the ups and you got to withstand the downs and, and keep a level head, keep your cool, keep your calm on the sideline. And, and our kids did a great job of doing that. In the second quarter, Darius Montgomery took an interception to the house. How did this play change the momentum of the game? Yeah, you can just see the energy on the sideline in the stadium after something big like that happened. So. Um, defense scored twice and, and almost scored three times, so I've never been a part of a game where they scored three times, mm -hmm. uh, which would have been awesome. But those are huge plays in the game, um, and, and really those were guys just doing their assignment. It was nothing superhuman, nothing crazy about it, just guys where they were supposed to be at the right place at the right time, and us playing together as one. And so, um, 
so yeah, fun to see the defense have that success and, and get in the end zone a couple times and, uh, and help us out on the offensive side. Coach, last week you told me that averaging 30 points per game wasn't enough. Now that you score 52 points against the Lions, is this what you were looking for? Yeah, I mean, somewhat. I mean, with the defense having two touchdowns and we had three trips to the red zone, we got zero points out of three trips, which isn't good. So um, we've been really good in the, in the red zone so far this year, and we kind of took a step back and, and didn't execute there a couple drives, and, and most of it was self-inflicted wounds. Um, you know, we had a couple penalties and a couple drops that, that hurt us down there, and uh, we just got to do a better job at, at executing when we get in the red zone and, and finding a way to get points off of it. Talk about your freshman quarterback. He's performing at a high level. Are you surprised about his development this early in his career? And what are your expectations as he moves on throughout the season? Yeah, he's doing a good job at seeing the defense. Um, you know, he, he's starting to understand our scheme more and more as time goes. <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't take for granted those game reps. I mean, that's, those are invaluable. You can't, can't get them, uh, replace them any, any kind of way. If a coach could, they would, they would do it, trust me. So the one thing that I didn't like is, is we got him hit a couple too many times. Um, you know, we had some breakdowns and protection uh, that we can't do, and, and our offensive line has, has done a phenomenal job in the run game all, all season, and, and we got to step it up a little bit in protection, keep him upright. But John's learning from his mistakes. He's made some mistakes early and turned it over, and, and now he's not turning it over, which is key for our, our success. Coach, also talk about the dynamic Copeland has with his receivers, Edwards, Baptiste, uh, Williams. Talk about the connection and dynamic they have. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all timing. You know, the, the more you throw and catch with these guys, the better timing they have. And then the other thing is, is this offense is designed to take what, what the defense gives you. So you never know as a wideout, you might come out and, and have 180 yards like Baptiste did this week, or you might be like Lamont Johnson, who's played great for us, and, and it just doesn't come your way during the course of a game. You're, you're called to block a little bit more, which that, that's the most impressive thing to me is these guys aren't selfish. They don't care who gets the ball, and um, if, if they have it, they're running hard with it. If they don't, they're blocking for one another. So. Uh, Coach Dor Jordan Davis done a phenomenal job of getting those guys to play, play together and, and unselfish. And how are you going to handle the success in your team? Yeah, definitely concerned. Um, it's always a worry of a coach and you know you just don't want to have any setbacks. You want to keep reminding them of, of what got us here and that's good preparation. So um, I think it's human nature anytime you have success you know that, that you get complacent and maybe a little lackadaisical in your, in your work. And uh, we have to avoid that uh, at all costs. I mean, we're going to face a Lamar team that's lost a couple close ones. It could have gone either way, and, and we got to know that, that we're going to get their best shot, and we got to come out and, and continue to get a week better every week. Yes. Coach, what do you think is being underrated on your team right now? Uh, just just our, our attitude and our effort. I mean, the... The way these guys are fighting together, um, you know, when, when anything happens, whether it's good or bad, they continue to fight and, and they continue to play extremely hard for one another. Um, coaches are doing a great job of getting them in the right places at the right time. And, uh, you know, we got to continue to eliminate some mistakes, some of those big plays that we gave up and, uh, and, and continue to, uh, to execute all the small things. And for this upcoming game, what are your expectations for the team? Yeah, just, just, and then we talk about it all the time, just get a week better. I mean, I want them to, to really learn from their mistakes. Um, we, we made a lot of corrections on the game film yesterday, and, and we have to carry that over into the next week. And, and the sign of a great team is when they don't keep repeating the same mistakes over and over, that they get those fixed carrying over to the next game. And so we gotta, we got to continue to do that, uh, fix a couple things, and, and keep playing with the same uh, attitude and effort that they're playing with. Thank you so much, Coach, for being here with us today. And we hope to see you back again on Monday. And good luck on this road game that you have. Thanks for having me.
Carnival fans joining us today. We have a native of the beautiful Alamo City. We have our head volleyball coach, Samantha Dabbs. Thank you so much, Coach, for being here with us today. Yeah, thank you again for having me. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. We had a, another early morning 6 a.m. practice, so the Monday started off good, like always. Oh, that's really yeah. good. Coach, let's talk about outside hitter Maddie Slaughter, who played a major role, and she also set a personal record of seven blocks. Right. So Madison Slaughter, being our senior, it's really good for her yeah. to kind of lead by example on the court like that and just be so dominating. Um, we've, I've actually switched her role to the middle. Um, so she's our middle blocker, which is the hardest position on the court. They are working the hardest in every single point, um, every single rally. They're winded and they're exhausted because they're working side to side. They're working on and off the net. I mean, they're up in zero fast tempo offense all the time. So for her to do that, it just kind of sets the standard. And she is a physical kid and leading by example like that as a senior being that aggressive and that um, good that match was really really a huge momentum builder and a confidence booster on her end too. What have you seen recently in this past game that you would like to work on? So this past weekend we had two tough losses on the road against Texas A&M Corpus Christi on Thursday night and then we lost a five setter against Houston Baptist two teams that are you know both young in some areas and we matched up well against but what I'm really looking for is we're at home this week against the two top ranked teams in our conference, um, yes. SFA and UCA, and they're good. They're big, they're physical, and they're disciplined. So for us, we're just going to have to kind of expose our weaknesses even more and then go even harder at what we are successful at right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this whole week we will be mentally and physically exhausted because for us to win this weekend, we are going to have to be mentally and physically exhausted after every set. So yes. I'm looking to hopefully we're playing our best volleyball. We have both the uh, top ranked two teams in our conference at home. So we have the advantage. So we just got to be aggressive. Yes. And what are your expectations for this upcoming game? So I think um, I'm expecting my team to really stay locked in and checked in and not have any mental errors. This game is a game of mistakes, right? That's the only way you score is if the other team makes a mistake pretty much. So I'm looking for them to stay locked in through the whole, a whole rally is about eight seconds long and I need them to stay locked in and do their job individually <laughs> yes. for just eight seconds or however long uh -huh. it takes to end that play, but being successful at it at the end. Well, thank you so much, Coach, for being here with us. Yeah, of and course. we hope to see you back again on Monday. Yeah, thank you for having me. Cardinal fans joining us now, we have our men's soccer head coach, Chris Filler. Thank you so much, coach, Thank for being you. here and congratulations on this big win. Thank you. Um, coach, how do you keep the team motivated with this weather yesterday? It's difficult because we've had issues in the past where our performance has dipped and it's always been an excuse for the weather. Um, but the fact that we were 3-1 up and we had the chance to get our first victory, I think the guys kept themselves motivated, but it is, an, it is always an issue. And for me personally, I was frustrated on the sideline because I wanted to get the game going, but eventually we got the game in and we got the win. So props to the guys, they did it themselves. So, How did you guys were able to come back and score three goals? Just talk about a little bit Honestly, more. Honestly, I don't know. Um, <laughs> You know, when you go 1-0 down again, you know, we were on the better team. It's frustrating and then you always think, here we mm -hmm. go again. Um, but to be fair to them, they kept fighting, they kept battling. As, as I said to them before the game, and I've said throughout the season, once you get that first goal, the floodgates will open and it happened. Yes. And it was a good time to do it because we scored two goals, I think, in the last couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so it deflates the opposition and it keeps us going. So to get the lightning delay, mm -hmm. which ruined the momentum, I was always concerned about that. But you know, it was a difficult second half, but you know, we got the win in the end yes. and the guys battled through. So yes, I'm happy. congratulations. And what was the message to the team after yesterday's game? Um, you know, to enjoy the moment because it's mm -hmm. been a long time coming, but at the end of the day, we still have goals to achieve. So we haven't achieved them yet. You know, we still have six games left of the season. I've set them a specific target of how many points I want them to get. Um, so, you know, it's to keep the ball rolling, keep the momentum going. 
you know, to keep the feel good factor going as well. Because we don't want to win one game and then lose the next one because it mm -hmm. just deflates everybody again. So, you know, but like I said, keep training positive, light, entertaining, and keep the good feeling going. Coach, tell us something that's been underrated about the team. How hard they have actually worked. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's easy to look at the results and the stats and go, oh, they're not playing well. Um, but when you actually watch the games and you can see how hard they're working and how hard they're fighting for each other, mm -hmm. you know, you can't question their commitment regardless of the results. So, like I said, fair play to the guys. They've battled through and hopefully we can keep it going for the rest of the season. Yes. And what is the dynamic of the team right now? It's positive right now, obviously, yes. with a win. Um, but like I said, we've got some banged up bodies. Um, so everyone's just trying to you know, this stage of the season, it's all about body management as opposed to learning new things. We changed the tactics for this weekend, it worked. So we'll keep working on that, you know, specific things in practice. Um, but the dynamic's good. Everyone's happy, everyone's positive. You know, everyone was excited yesterday. So hopefully we can take that into the next game. Well, thank you so thank much, you. Coach, for being here with us. And we hope to see you back again on Monday. And good luck on this thank upcoming you. game. I appreciate it. Coming off a big road victory, we have our women's soccer head coach, Emma Wright Cates. Thank you so much, coach, for being here with us today. Thanks for having me, Carla. In this past game, you guys had one of the best attacking percentage. How are you guys going to use this toward your advantage for this upcoming game? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, the numbers speak justice for the way that the girls have been performing over the last couple of games. I mean, against Southeastern, even though we tied that game, we had 15 shots on goal um, and scored one opportunity. So we are creating in each game. Um, heading into the Lamar and McNeese games, we need to continue to do more of the same um, and just creating those opportunities. And it will help us, obviously, win games and get in front of goal. And what's the dynamic of the team after this victory? Um, just really encouraging, focused, um, you know, we have been teaching them about having that short term, you know, memory um, and just focusing on the next job, the next task and on, on the way home we're watching video of the next team ready to prepare and the girls have that same mindset, they've put it behind them and now they're looking forward. Uh, what's something that you think it's been underrated about your team? I think just their work ethic and their drive. I mean, they fight for everything, every point, every challenge. You know, they're always fighting for each other and lifting each other up. Um, and just that underdog mentality, that mm -hmm. nitty gritty. Um, I think a lot of teams underestimate us that way. Yes. And what are you hoping to see in this upcoming two games against Lamar and Magnus this weekend? Yeah, I mean, you know, Lamar are very good. They've got high energy. They have some very talented players. They knock the ball around really well. Um, McNeese tend to get the ball wide and drive crosses into the box. So it's two different looks. One team looking to come through us, one, look, one looking to get wide and serve in. Lamar won the conference last year, so it's going to be a tough challenge. They're sitting in the second spot right now. Um, and McNeese are there mid-table. So we'll be hoping to pinch off both of them, really. Coach, this is your last, um, the seniors are playing their last game at home. Mm -hmm. What does this mean to you? I mean, we've got 10 seniors, so that's a massive chunk of our team. Uh, we've got 26 players, so that's almost half the team. Um, it's going to be very emotional for them, and hopefully they can come out on top. Thank you so much for being here with us today, mm -hmm. and we hope you, you have a really good performance on this upcoming two games and we hope to see you back on Monday. Brilliant, thank you, Carla. Thank you. Appreciate Want to it. Impress your friends at the next UIW tailgating party? Here at NCR, we have plenty of makes and models for every personality, even yours, Red. Do you see anything here that catches your eye? the type of tailgating I had in mind, Red. Carnal fans, we have our women's and men's 
cross country track and field head coach, Dr. Derek Riddle. Thank you so much, coach, for being here with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Coach, talk about this past meet. The men's got first place and the mm. women's got second place yeah. at the invitational meet. What does this mean to your team? It's a good confidence booster. Uh, the men scored only 18 points, perfect scores, mm -hmm. 15. So it's they, they were nearly as perfect as you can get in cross country. So it was a great confidence booster. Uh, they, they ran almost identical times to what they ran the week before at Notre Dame. But the, the, the confidence booster is that, that uh, Notre Dame was 60 degrees, flat, mm -hmm. great footing. Our meet was 95% humidity, yes. 80, or 80 degrees, uh, very hilly course. So that was a good confidence booster. And the women ran, they were only two points behind the defending conference champion, Abilene Christian. So mm -hmm. that was a, yes. a great effort for them. Just barely missed pulling it out. Three points away, just mm -hmm. three points away. It was close. Very, very close. Coach, um, talk about senior Garrett Cortez. He's, he's averaging a five minute, five second mile. Yes. How is he training to do this? Uh, it's, it's, it's been a, a labor of love. You know, he's been training. He, uh, the, the thing that's helped him is he doesn't miss any days. You know, he's, that's four years of consistent work at the college level has allowed him to get to the level that he's at. Uh, and then the intensity, the determination that he brings every day to practice has allowed him to get to this level. Uh, and, and he's just a very talented, God-given ability. Um, but uh, yeah, this was the second year and uh, second time that he's won the oh, Invitational, wow. the UIW time. invite. He was second last year, and I think he was top three his freshman year. So he's never been worse than third at our invite the entire time he's been here. Yes, that's, that's really mm -hmm. nice. Congratulations. Yeah, I appreciate it. He's, I, he's done a great job. Yeah. And that's, our course is very challenging. And with the humidity that we had and the heat, for him to average just over five, uh, five minutes per mile, I think it was a 505 or 506 per yes, mile, 505. is very encouraging. And after the men's winning and the women's taking home second place, what is the dynamic of the team and how they're going to prepare for the big <sighs> meet, the big Southland Championship? Well, they're, they're confident. They're healthy. This, uh, we, we're very healthy right now. Uh, they're training at a very high level. Uh, they're very focused on conference, and they're pushing each other on a daily basis. So uh, the thing I love most about the team this year is that they hold each other accountable, uh, and uh, it's, it's really lent itself to better performances. Uh, but, yeah, they're ready. We have conference, I think it's 18 days from now, 19 days, um, and, and that's the ultimate goal is to be ready to, to compete for conference championships in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Thank you so much, Coach, and congratulations on this success. And we hope to see you back again on Monday. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Uh -huh. Appreciate it. Each summer, student athlete leaders from the Southland Conference's 13 schools get together for a retreat. Before we start another season of competition, there's time to have some fun and bond. We also share experiences of serving our campuses and communities. Together, Southland student athletes completed more than 30,000 community service hours over the past year. We pull for each other and push to make each other better. Just part of what makes us Southland strong. Coach, we added a new segment to our show. I'm going to ask you five different questions and you have five seconds to answer okay. a question, okay? All right. What's your favorite song before a game? Friends in Low Places. Twinkle, Twinkle. Imagine Dragons Natural. Who's your favorite athlete? Um, Tiger Woods. Kobe Bryant. Uh, I would say Mia Hamm. Cristiano Ronaldo. All time Tim Duncan. What's your favorite quote? Uh, be where your feet are. Uh, okay. Respect everyone, fear no one. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Uh, to give anything less than your best is to, is to sacrifice the gift by Steve Prefontaine. What's the first thing you do when you get bored? Watch TV. Sit in silence. Uh, play on my phone. Watch sports. And what's the best purchase you have done? Best purchase, my car. Adidas shoes. A basketball goal for my three-year-old son. Probably a TV. A TV. <laughs> a treadmill for my bedroom. A really nice uh, per, uh, treadmill. Yeah. Helps me stay in shape. <laughs>
Cardinal fans, make sure to catch your teams in action this week as the UIW football team goes on the road to face Lamar at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Volleyball returns home this Thursday at 7 p.m. against Stephen F. Austin and on Saturday at noon versus Central Arkansas. Women's soccer host a pair of conference games against Lamar at 5 p.m. on Friday and Magnis at 1 p.m. on Saturday. The men's soccer team heads to Las Vegas to face UNLV Rebels on Saturday at 9 p.m. and the cross-country teams will prepare for the Southland Conference Championship later this month. Thank you for watching and make sure to follow us at UIW Athletics on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook for more updates on score and news. For UIW Athletics, I'm Carla Bello. Have a beautiful day.